make Hurry, Mr. Bergeron's on Don't forget the popcorn, Frank Coming, dear And so when we go into the home with... Oh, by, by the way, stop mm -hmm. for a second, because sure. I was actually going to do that piece a little bit, little bit later on, but I wanted to, to mention that. Most people assume that you can't get those kinds of nursing services at home unless you've been to the hospital, right? That's so true. that's yeah. why we really want to mm -hmm. emphasize that. The, do the doctor has to write the... the that's right, right, an order. But typically, mm -hmm. the, the, the link into the doctor is them. Yeah. Right? Because your doctor isn't coming to your house. I mean, for Some sure. Do. The Some do. Yeah. Yes? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, this is Nantucket. Yes, The indeed. doctor doesn't come Absolutely. to our house. Absolutely. We've got okay. the extra special people here. That's Absolutely. great. Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. So basically what the doctor or the physician, you know, the, the ordering physician lets us know what they would like us to do for you, why you need us there. So they may order skilled nursing to change a dressing on a wound. They may order physical therapy to rehabilitate, to strengthen you if you're feeling weak or you've gone downhill a little bit. They may order um, occupational therapy to come in to do a home safety evaluation to see that you have all of the appropriate safety measures in the home to keep you safe at home. Um, we also have a dietitian on staff um, and the doctor, you, basically the doctors here are great. If we say, you know, I think so-and-so would benefit from a, a, a consult with the dietitian, they say, I trust your judgment, off you go. So we have diabetic teaching, all sorts of things. We also have a medical social worker who sees our patients, and he does great work with um, not just the patient, but with patients' families. Many people are dealing with chronic um, debilitating illnesses. Many people are you know, facing death and dying and dealing with those issues. So um, he's very beneficial as well. And we all work together as a team to plan the care for the patient and then to coordinate the care for the patient and family. Um, the, the first thing is we recognize that we are guests in your home. You can decide you don't want us there. Dr. Pearl may say, I think you'd really benefit from VNA. We go out and you say, no, I don't want any. You have the right to determine your own um, lifestyle and what you want to do with your health. Um, now, and now how much mm -hmm. are they paying you for this? Lots and lots. I make the big buck. Yeah. No, but, I love this work. I love it. No, but this is all. That, I, that was meant jokingly. This is these are these are medic these are Medicare paid, right? Yes. When you're yes. At, when you're at home after that discharge, mm -hmm. or when you're home through those through the 60-day plan, mm -hmm. those are those are all Medicare paid. Yes. You do not have to be private pay. You don't have to be so low in income that you're qualifying for Medicaid. Now there is there is of course criteria for that. Um, right. No more than in the rehab, you're allowed to stay for 100 days as long as you make progress. Um, or as long as you or as long as you don't go backwards. As long as you're not going back. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. And we uh, basically have the same stipulations attached to our care. We develop a plan, and we have to set goals that we work together with you to determine. Um, and we have to either meet those goals or get close to meeting those goals in a time period. So initially, the doc the Medicare says you have 60 days to accomplish this. And so we check our care plans every time we visit the patient and determine how closer we're getting to the goals. We change the goals. Um, now, we, what if, what, what if mm -hmm. 60 days comes and, you, and it looks like, as far as you're concerned, somebody still needs some care? Yep. Then we write, um, we speak with the doctor, and we ask if they'll extend the orders. And Medicare will do that as long as we can show very clearly and with quantifiable um, proof, basically, that you haven't yet reached your goals, but that you are making progress. Medicare will allow us to stay in there to affect that progress. And by the way, this is one of the questions now that is being raised regarding Jimmo. The Jimmo mm -hmm. case mm -hmm. was a rehab case. That's right. But the question is, is the new standard, and a lot of us think that the new standard is, is, is also applying to these 60-day plans mm -hmm. and to all of her home care. So the question now is no longer going to be, are you making progress, but rather, are you in need of these kinds of services? And if she's not there, or one of her friendly nurses is not there, are you going to deteriorate as a result of their not being there? Fundamentally different. And it's yeah. really going to expand for a whole lot of people their ability to, to, to stay home on Medicare as opposed to having to worry about private pay or trying to pl you know, pl play right. the Medicaid shuffle. You know? okay. And initially, when we, when we come to, to work with a patient, you know, we, we come with, with everything. So if the doctor orders PT, OT, and skilled nursing, there has to be a skilled nursing need. 
Um, we can't just go in, you know, to take your blood pressure. We have to actually go in to be treating something that requires a skilled nursing need. Um, we initially start out, you know, all guns blazing with the hope and intention that the patient is going to progress and get better and so we'll taper back in those 60 days. We'll be tapering back those services. So initially we'll say you have a cardiac bypass, you come home from hospital. Um, initially the nurse would come to you maybe three times a week. Um, we would, if it's appropriate, we would provide home health aides who would help you with the activities of daily living, like dressing, bathing, things that might be difficult for you just now because you've had this major surgery. The hope is that you know, as the weeks go on, we'll be pulling out one of those visits. Um, PT will again go in re you know, at least three times a week to get you up and going, particularly after joint replacements. Many people do hips and knees you know, from 60 upwards. Um, and again, the goal is you know, to get you back to your baseline or as close to your baseline as is possible. And once we've achieved that, then we all say goodbye and wish you the very best and let you know that we'll be there should you need us again. Um, our collaboration with the hospital and with physicians here is really important. Um, and also we work with many social services agencies like elder services. Um, we all know each other, we all care about each other. So we work very well together, all of us. Ditto with palliative care. Um, you know, as I said, we're all connected here at some level. So. And, and by the way, going. and by the way, we're going to invite Ella back if she's if she's going to be nice enough to come back next time also because as you, you recall, we're trying to deal with three different kinds of issues: staying at home when you're mm -hmm. fine, staying home when there's an emergency, and staying home if you're really getting frail. And that's what we're going to talk about in the third presentation. But Ella, thank you. Thank sure. you. Oh, One other thing, I'm really excited about this. Um, the Jimmo. The Jimmo. I'm really excited about Jimmo because many the of the slide. patients who come to us <coughs> come to us because they have chronic conditions and unfortunately Medicare until this case says we can only treat acute conditions for short-term intermittent care so I'm interested to see where Jimmo goes because many people have conditions like Parkinson's that are not ever going to get up to here but that may get to here for a good long time right. and you know with us in place may stay here for a good long time with us out of place may slide back downhill. That's so so much of the I'm goal. excited about that. Thank you. Sure. Next slide. Thank you. She's, yeah, they're really, they're really good. Um, so who pays? This is the reason why I wanted you to you know, get a sense of those numbers. Um, Medicare is going to pay for those up to 100 days in, uh, in the, uh, um, the, skill, the, um, the rehab facility, right? They will continue, they will pay while you're at home um, right after rehab or for, if for in those 60-day increments. And what's interesting is, as, I, as was mentioned, those can continue. And the reason why you probably want that as your alternative is, if you need MassHealth, which is the Massachusetts name for the, Medicare, for the Medicaid program, and you're at home, you're not in a nursing home, with one big exception, which we'll talk about next time, this issue of if you can demonstrate that, in it, that if you were, were it not for the care you're getting at home, then you would be in a nursing home uh, and MassHealth would have to pay for you to be in a nursing home. In that case, they really don't want you to go to the nursing home, so suddenly they get much more flexible on this stuff, right? But until that happens, and in most cases that's not happening in, in Frank's situation, you can't qualify for MassHealth unless your income is, more, is less than 1300, 1313 for a couple or 978 for an individual, right? Those are really low, I'm not, I don't have to tell you, right? Uh, so, which means that regarding uh, care at home, you are stuck with family and friends uh, or others. But I, I am saying that wrong. You're not stuck with them, but you are dealing with family or friends or others if you need that kind of care. Next slide. Um, which leads to home care agencies. I want to be talking for a while about home care agencies and other alternatives like hiring somebody on your own or you know, a relative or whatever. But I asked Alice Daniels to come to talk about home care agencies because she's been in Nantucket for a long time, has been doing a lot of this. And I just wanted to give, to give you a sense of kind of what home care agencies do and when you might want to use them. Because I know that there is, as with so much of this stuff, if you haven't had somebody in your home, there's a real nervousness about who's this person showing up in my house. Uh, and a lot of times when you come home from, especially from rehab, there's a lot of folks who are just saying, well, I don't need that, right? I'm fine, right? Which is the like, dumbest thing you can do because it, you're going to end up back in the hospital. 
which means you're going to be mad because you're back in the hospital, and the hospital's going to be mad because it's going to screw up all their numbers because you went back to the hospital too fast, right? So you really want to understand what's available with home care. So Alice, could you just talk about home care? Yeah, 